Seattle students in the college district terrified of people lurking outside their bedroom windows at night. And we've got ring camera video that shows what they're afraid of. Congressman Adam Schiff in Imperial Beach talking immigration and sewage. A new strain of COVID-19 is spreading fast, but what does it mean for your latest booster shot? We verify. Plus, folks, Mother Nature is sending us a message. Hot temperatures are leading to worldwide concerns. A closer look at new numbers released by NASA. The summer sun is calling, but don't forget to enjoy responsibly. And after incarceration, mechanics in training are finding a road to success with Vehicles for Change. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A warning tonight for people who live in the college area around San Diego State. A ring camera captured a man staring into a woman's bedroom window late at night. That woman tells us this could easily happen again. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan in for Carlo Chiquetto. That video was recorded late last Thursday night. The woman who lives in the home says she and her female neighbors think peeping toms roam their neighborhood because it's so dark. CBS 8's Anna Laurel spent the day working for you and trying to help the people who live there feel more safe. She joins us live now from the college district where this happened. Anna quite concerning. Yeah, very much so, Marcella and Jesse. I'm here right off Montezuma Road in the College District. Everybody we talked with out here today keeps telling us, oh yeah, all the street lights, all the street lights around here are out. Now, the student that we met today, she tells me that she and other female students are terrified of the people lurking in the dark. Here is him going over our front gate. Um, and looking like he knows exactly where he's going, right to the side of the house where my bedroom window is. This is a San Diego State University student showing us what her ring camera caught happening outside her house around 10 o'clock Thursday night when she was home alone. If I zoom in here, you can see him peering into my bedroom window. She says she was sitting on her bed when her ring camera showed her a man climbing into her yard. And in real time, she watched him walk up to her bedroom window and stare inside. And there I saw him creeping, like looking into my window, his hands cupped over his eyes. I was scared. I was very scared, yeah. She crawled into a room with no windows and called 911. You can see on her ring video, the police search for him with flashlights. They never found him. I have no video of him exiting. I don't know where he went. But this SDSU student says her classmates are scared. No street lights work on her street or the surrounding streets. In the dark, it just makes it so much us more of like a target. She filled out a report on the city's Get It Done app. She was shocked when it told her it would take about 332 days to get the lights repaired. So she reached out to me to see if CBS 8 could help get the city's attention. Students everywhere, but like young females um, who are scared, like they're scared to be walking around at night. I started calling the city early this morning and our city council representative, Sean Elo Rivera. They tell me the city is scheduled to repair streetlights in the college area at Remington and Colwood this month. But that's about a mile away from this student's streets. She hopes sharing her story will make the city see all of the college district should be a priority. Before I even moved to a house um, over in this area, like I was well aware that um, lots of girls and just other students are targeted and especially with these street lights being out. I just think it makes us just so much more susceptible to that. And sadly, as you just heard, this student says it is widely talked about among these students about she said how sketchy this college district area is, but this is where she's a student. This is where she goes to school. This is where she needs to go to class and to study with her classmates. And so she, like thousands of other students and especially young women, this is where they are walking the streets, even at night. Live out here in the college district, this is Anna Laurel working for you at CBS 8. Guys. Anna, we've seen these stories before. People telling us that the street lights are out in their neighborhood and that their streets are dark. They don't feel safe. How does the city prioritize which area gets fixed first? Obviously, there are a lot of young people who live in this area, young women afraid to walk around alone. And now this video that shows, you know, these guys are just um, have no... Uh, they're just out there and um, aren't scared off. They're comfortable. Didn't he seem, he seems, this girl said, yes. it looks like he's done this before, like at her house. That's what's really freaking her out. Um, so yes, you and I actually, Marcella, you and I have been talking about these uh, stories for about a year now. Mm -hmm. 6,000 was the backlog a year ago. Um, so here's how the city says that they are prioritizing. They say, 
crime rates in an area, uh, proximity to schools and parks, communities of concern, those are kind of tops on the list, and then they have other things on the list. That's how they prioritize who gets there, what neighborhood gets their street lights fixed, next the student hopes it's hers well hopefully by you highlighting the issue here the city will get on top of that and uh, make the kids there feel a little bit more safe thanks so much Shanna. Mm -hmm. the man accused of stabbing his neighbor to death inside an east village apartment is still in jail tonight after pleading not guilty to murder earlier today officers say last week 25 year old maxwell logan went into 38 year old andrew holland's home and stabbed him in the head and upper body 40 to 50 times investigators say the attack was random and unprovoked Police arrested Logan after his girlfriend flagged down police and told them he was acting, quote, strange and violent. He could face 28 years to life in state prison if convicted. Congressman Adam Schiff was in the South Bay today touring the border area and meeting with local leaders and activists to discuss issues ranging from immigration to sewage. CBS 8's Steve Price was invited to this hour-long roundtable. He's live in Imperial Beach tonight with more of what happened today. Steve? And Marcella, Adam Schiff sits on a lot of very important committees. The Democrat from L.A., very welcomed by people like the mayor of Imperial Beach, who constantly has to deal with things like this, signs on her beaches saying they're closed because of sewage. She wanted to talk to him about that. Others want to talk to him about the situation at the border. Spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain injuries. Critical injuries from border wall falls up from 12 in 2016 to over 140 last year. These are life altering injuries that uh, the medical doctors are, are seeing both at Scripps and at UCSC. Immigration uh, advocates meeting Monday with Congressman Adam walls, Schiff, hoping he'll take their there. concerns to uh, Washington, like D.C. Kind of and fight for changes that improve safety at our border crossings, especially for those seeking asylum. It has become so politicized, so highly charged, it's hard to get to yes on it. But we really need to. Uh, I don't think anyone thinks this system is working. Congressman Schiff toured the border area before meeting with local leaders, including Friendship Park, which advocates say has become anything but friendly for families in the U.S. and Mexico trying to spend time together. These were things I had read about, but actually seeing uh, is so helpful in terms of conceptualizing the problem. Schiff the also system. spent about half of the hour long system. meeting talking about sewage seeping in from Mexico. The mayor of Imperial Beach says it's having a devastating effect on her community. We now know that it not only takes you entering the water to get sick, but you can also get sick just from breathing the ocean breeze. Mayor Aguirre says some beaches in her city have now been closed for 641 consecutive days. Schiff seemed sympathetic to the problem that this community has been fighting for decades. I think we could find easily find bipartisan support to deal with this and uh, uh, and the fact it's gone on so long is just intolerable. Schiff is running for the U.S. Senate. So was this just a chance to win support or really create change? Mayor Aguirre says Schiff sits on powerful committees, so she's cautiously optimistic. I'm hoping that him and his very strong voice in Congress uh, helps us raise the issue to the level it needs to be. So once again, Schiff is serving, is in the process of serving, I should say, his 12th term in the House of Representatives. He is running now for Senate to try and replace Dianne Feinstein. And Marcella, he also has a very big tie to the San Diego area. His wife is from here. The folks out here are hoping that when you add all that up, he does have the power to get those wheels rolling. They are hoping he can help cut through some of the red tape that has just taken them forever to get anything done. Uh, Steve, it doesn't sound like Congressman Schiff offered any specific solutions or promises while talking to local leaders and advocates, did he? No, he definitely did not offer any promises. He didn't come here and say, I'm going to give you that billion dollars you need. That said, they are optimistic because he was asking a lot of follow-up questions. When they would say something to him, he would ask the next question. So he definitely was listening. We'll see if that turns into money, if that turns into action. But he was here taking notes and listening to what they were saying. All right, Steve Price for us live tonight on the Congressman's visit to San Diego. Steve, thank you.
Tonight, former San Diego County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher is demanding more than $10,000 in legal fees in a case where he is accused of sexual harassment. CBS 8 obtained documents that show Fletcher is claiming he requested case records on June 20th. Those records include photos, videos, voice recordings, texts, and social media interactions. The attorney for the woman accusing Fletcher of sexual harassment and sexual assault claimed Fletcher's requests were too broad or too extreme. Fletcher is also calling for a hearing on October 27th to compel his accuser to respond to records requests of her own. Meanwhile, tomorrow is the last day to vote for Fletcher's District 4 County Supervisor replacement. There are seven voting centers open for both in-person voting and mail-in ballot. Now tomorrow, even more centers will be open with expanded hours as the official election day is here. And here's a look at the candidates running for the District 4 seat. If no candidate wins the majority, which would be 50% plus one, there will be a runoff election in November for the top two vote getters. You can go to CBS8.com for a full voter's guide and all of the information you need for the special election. To encourage everyone to get out and vote in the District 4 special election, NBA Hall of Famer Bill Walton showed up to the North Claremont Community Center. It's one of seven designated voting centers across the district. Walton was there for about a half hour, shooting hoops with the locals, hanging out. Regardless of party affiliation, he says everyone should cast their ballot. Sports, basketball, it brings us together. There is nothing more patriotic in all of our lives than voting. Countless people have died for our right to vote. 400,000 voters got mail-in ballots for the special election. About 68,000 of those have been returned. Still ahead here on CBS 8 News Live at 6, the Maui wildfire death toll continues to rise. The new questions tonight about accountability during the fire. Plus, new details on a lawsuit against waste management after a woman was hit by one of their trucks. Well, we have some cloud cover that is out there. We're going to continue to see that and also have high humidity throughout the week. We'll go ahead and take a look at those details coming up. And coming up next, a new COVID variant is causing big concern. We verify if a booster shot is enough to keep you safe.